Hey everybody, Keith K here, and today we are playing Dawn of Man. I've got five tips that can help you uh, succeed and thrive at this um, ancient society simulator. Dawn of Man is a simulation where you try to take your tribe from the Paleolithic to the Iron Age by um, thriving through many seasons, uh, gathering resources, fighting off attacks, and advancing your knowledge. And today I'll go through five tips that will help you succeed in playing the game. Let's get started. Number one, first up is to go through the game's tutorial. Uh, Dawn of Man tutorial is actually pretty good and it's worth taking the time to go through. Um, unlike games that <laughs> have no tutorial um, or don't have a very good one, this will step you through all the things you need to do to get through um, early game in terms of gathering resources. It'll also give you an explanation with clickable links if you want to dig in further. And it'll actually have you do all of the main tasks you've got to, uh, to get started and to begin to grow your village, including building um, some early game structures. Uh, from there, it'll go on to show you how to uh, grow your tribe and how to use, um, how to accumulate and use knowledge that allows you to uh, unlock different advancements. So make sure you go through the tutorial. It's well worth the time and it's not too long. Number two. So next up is work areas. In order to keep your tribe uh, productive and working without you having to micromanage each and every one of your villagers. In other words, clicking on him and saying, go gather this stick or uh, gather these rocks, you know, or um, you can send him here to gather this flint. So how do we avoid that? Well, that's where work areas come into play. And there are a variety of different work areas and some of these will unlock uh, throughout the game. So you can gather sticks, obtain flint, hunt, fish, uh, collect wild plants, and obtain stone. Those are the ones you start with. And as you can see, there are more that unlock here with different amount, uh, different uh, levels within your knowledge, your research tree, essentially. As you advance through your research tree, you'll unlock more work areas. So the key things we're worried about are food. So that's meat and fish and vegetables, uh, stick stones, and flint. Um, so you're going to want to scout around, you know, and you can pause the game while you do this so you're not losing precious time. So we sent him out to gather flint. We definitely need flint, but we also need stone, and we don't have the ability to mine it yet, right? So we've got to find stone on the ground that can just be gathered. Um, and the same holds for sticks and flint uh, and fish. So to set up a work area, You'll click here, place work area. Let's start with fish. And you'll essentially put it somewhere, you can see where it's red, there's there's no fish, right? So when you are placing a work area, you can actually use that to find resources. Now, fish are obviously gonna be by the water. Um, I recommend uh, putting it in between two sections of river because what will happen over time is the fish, the amount of fish will deplete as you are gathering fish out of it. So they can alternate between these two. Um, now this is covered in the tutorial, but one thing about work areas I wanted to point out that doesn't quite, um, it doesn't quite go through in the tutorial is you can control the maximum number of people on a particular work area. So if you really wanna focus on building up a particular resource, uh, you can increase that. Now you have to balance that with your workload. If you um, are, are putting you know 10 people on every, uh, work area, but you've only got seven, you're going to quickly overwhelm them um, and you're going to wear them out. So I'll usually start with just one unless there's something I really need to build up. The other thing to pay attention to is your production limit. Uh, they will gather this many of that resource and stop, right? So you have a limited amount of storage. That's the other thing you've got to worry about. And so you can manage how much of your storage you want taken up by a particular item like fish. Um, and before we're able to dry, before we unlock drying, uh, food drying technology, uh, you don't want to have too much food in your storage area because it will simply uh, rot. So let's look at some of the other early game ones. Sticks is very important and they're sometimes hard to see and that's where uh, the fact that this doesn't highlight unless there are sticks to be had. Here we go. There's a bunch over here. You can see them. So we'll go ahead and left click to place that work area. Um, and then we should be able to, there it is. Sometimes it's a little hard, tricky to find. Same thing, right? Let's say we wanna have a little more 
uh, sticks. You know, sticks, wood, stones, um, they can actually get their own storage areas. And one's right here, wood pile, so sticks can go into this and the slot can contain wood. You know, if you're gonna increase your storage limits, uh, you may wanna actually place another um, wood storage pile. So we'll just go ahead and do that just to show you. All right, and let's go ahead and place a rock storage while we're at it. And then we'll let these start moving. Okay, so those are two different types of work areas that we've got so far. Uh, let's see, hunting is a good one. You know, you can just kind of place it in a, in a treed area where you see game um, kind of going through on a regular basis. Early in the game, I actually prefer to, uh, you know, specifically give them instructions um, so I make sure that they're not, a, not hunting something that's too, uh, too dangerous. So we'll go ahead and, and hunt that. But let's take a look at a different uh, work area, which is to gather uh, wild plants. So berries, so we can see right here, we've got a bunch of different uh, fruit trees. Maybe there's a berry bur uh, bush in here. You've got a service tree, you've got a cherry tree. Um, so they will gather those resources when they're in season. You can see right now it can only be done in summer. That's one reason why I think um, for these types of resources, it's well worth putting down a work area because you won't have to worry about what season it is and keep checking that kind of thing. You can just kind of set it and forget it. Uh, flint, we did see that there was some flint up here. Um, and so by placing a work area, what will actually happen is, even though we told this old man to gather flint in one specific spot, when that is um, exhausted, rather than just stopping with gathering flint, they'll move to this next one. Okay, so that covers flint. Now for stone, we need to find some loose stone. Looks like we might have some here. Yeah, see this can just be gathered. This can just be gathered as opposed to mined. So let's go ahead and set a work area for stone here. Oh, there's some on the uh, that's near shore too. So we're gonna place it. You can see how it highlights different ones. We'll, we'll get our kind of our maximum uh, effect by placing it here. So they'll gather from these two. And then if we've unlocked mining and have some tools, uh, composite tools, if we've unlocked composite tools and have some of them built, uh, we'll start to see them actually mine here for us. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, work areas in a nutshell. There are others that you can place here, as you can see, um, but that's gonna cover it for tip number two to get you started. Number three. All right, so tip number three is closely related, and that is managing your production limits overall. Um, if you come down here to the manage menu, this is something that's not covered too extensively in the tutorial. You'll see a bunch of different uh, options here. So you have your tech tree, um, you have, you know, kind of a current view of all of your resources if you need that. Uh, you've got your stats if you want to see uh, how many of each type you've got and, you know, what's the welfare and prestige look like. Uh, the one I want to talk about right now, though, is manage limits because this becomes very important, especially as you start to have limits on the amount of storage and more and more types of resources, right? When you've just got fish and food, Maybe you don't have to worry about storage so much, but when you start to having to worry about having room for water and for milk and cheese and beer and wheat, etc., cetera. Um, these are absolute numbers. So here you can have as up to 100 units of meat. Uh, you can also go to percentages, right? So you can say, uh, I want a specific amount of meat, or you can say, I won't um, have any more than 20% uh, for the whole population. So, um, you know, it starts off with some defaults. You can come in here and modify that. We focus on, uh, I focus on uh, fishing and balancing fish and, and meat. Uh, you can't necessarily hunt um, all year and keep it fresh when you don't have the food drying technology. Um, but you can see some of these can be set to unlimited. The clothing is a percentage, uh, at least, you know, it can't, I keep it in a percentage. You wanna make sure you've got 100% of skins 100% of leather outfits that will balance. They can switch off between hot and cold weather. And then the same thing here as you get further on between linen and wool. Um, armor is different. This is 100% of adults. So when you see the A, that's the, the adults. So come through here and adjust your limits. 
Um, same thing with tools, especially if you're resource constrained, you might want to look at this closely and say, okay, I do want everybody to have a spear, you know, but I, I don't need everybody chopping wood. I'm, I've got that limited to, you know, one person chopping wood. So let's lower that to 25%. Etc. Right. Um, you can make those adjustments here, and same thing for your domestic animals. These are all set to unlimited. Um, you know, once you get going and you have to worry about feeding and storing these animals, you, you're going to want to actually have it something less than that. Um, it's based on the population of, of that you have as people. So you may actually, you know, I end up actually limiting by number uh, how many I need, and then I can adjust that later as I go. So that's it for tip number three. Number four. All right, tip four is to make sure you use primal vision. This is also covered quickly in the tutorial, but I wanted to spend a little bit more time on it. Um, this is really relevant to hunting animals, although it will show you other food sources. And you can access primal vision by hitting the tab key, and you will see a, a, all of the resources nearby kind of highlighted for you. And then you can see your, your people are over here in light blue. What I wanted to uh, really focus on was hunting animals, especially early in the game when you might not have advanced um, weapons or hunting technology. This will uh, tell you kind of what's safe to hunt, what's not safe to hunt. So here we have a uh, mouflon adult female that's green, so you can you could actually safely hunt that with one person, just kind of put hunt on it and let it go. Uh, but if we come up here, we can see a couple of other colors. Uh, we've got yellow, Wild horses, really not particularly dangerous, but you might, you know, you might decide to send two, two uh, uh, villagers after that. Um, young bisons, megalosaurus, you know, those are all yellow. Um, not necessarily going to kill your uh, hunting party, but you might want to send two people or more if you're, you know, you want to make sure you have a sex successful hunt. Uh, when we get to the orange. These could actually be dangerous. These could turn around and strike uh, your hunting party and definitely hurt you. And the reds uh, are something you want to very carefully go after from a hunting perspective because they will attack. This is a cave bear and, uh, you know, it will wipe out uh, your hunting party if it's only, you know, one or two people. Um, so definitely make sure you use your primal vision. The other thing about primal vision while you're kind of scouting resources is if you notice it pauses the game for us, even though we have our game speed set, so we can look around for other, for resources. Um, and you can see other resources here, like sticks. Uh, here we've got flint. You know they're kind of color coded. This is uh, iron ore, etc. But I think it's really important, especially early on, in deciding what you hunt. Number five. And now for tip number five, the last tip to get you going in Dawn of Man. Stay ahead of your population capacity. Um, you do want your uh, tribe to grow. You're going to need more and more people uh, to support more and more people. But you also want a bigger tribe for later stages when uh, you'll get animal attacks and uh, you'll also get raiders coming your way. So you can see here, this is red. This will turn red when, when there's an issue. So we've got a population of seven and a capacity for six. So two things here. One, we can't grow. As it says, no migrants will come and join us and no births will take place. But the second issue is that with cold weather coming, um, we will end up uh, having folks out in the elements. So where you want to go is down to your build menu, residence, tent. And we want to make sure we you know build another tent. You can uh, rotate this, as it says, using... Uh, C and, and uh, Z, so maybe we want this pointing towards the fire. Now, note that uh, you need four sticks and two skins. Uh, we don't have any skins up here. We've got a raw skin. In order to get that dried skin, we're going to need to build, uh, if we go to build production, we're going to need a skin dryer. So go ahead and get that built right away. I usually put it sort of near the crafting tent. And I actually will build two at a time when I build these, just to make sure there's plenty. Okay, and now we see we get an alert that there are no storage slots left either. So that's something else to keep an eye on it. Um, there is a help associated with that, but basically if you click on a tent, you can see that there's storage available in a tent uh, here, and this tent is full, and this tent is full. So they can items can stack of the same type, 
Um, but once you have, you know, we've got one bone in here, so that's taking up a full slot, even though we've only got one bone. Um, so that's why it's important to get this second tent built. And uh, I would actually go ahead and go to your build storage menu and build a storage tent. There's uh, nothing you need to unlock to do that early in game. Uh, we just need to find a spot for it. I like to have it also near by the dryers and the, the crafting uh, structure. Um, so that's going to take another four skins. So we're going to need to make sure that we um, are hunting. And I'm going to speed this up and we'll come back and take a look when it's ready. All right, and so now we've got our extra tent and our storage tent built. You can see that our capacity has now gone up to nine um, and we can get more villagers either through migrants or through birth and uh, keep going. So that's going to wrap it up for our five tips. Hopefully uh, this helps you get started in Dawn of Man and you're able to enjoy the game. Please uh, leave a like if you got something out of this video. Um, if you have questions or additional tips, please uh, leave it in the comments down below. I will do my best to uh, respond to any questions and I know tips from other viewers are definitely appreciated by uh, everybody. So thank you uh, again for watching and we'll see you back here soon.